All right. Hey, you guys doing? Are you, uh, do you have any questions about the if statements before I begin? If it's easy, right? You'll get used to it. <laughs> if I were a rich man, I wouldn't be here. So, all right, last time we were talking um, about your grading skill. Right? I just want to put this on the side. So I was. So, we used, we have five options we use for different if statements, right? Let's say you want to, you already gave the grade, we have a character. I tell you, the only place that really asks what your GPA was is the military. Other than that, nobody cares. They just care you graduated. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, so, if I want to display Series of positive statements. Sometimes at the bottom of your transcript it says your how you're doing in plain English. So you're an excellent student, right? That B, you're good. And then C, you're just um, orange. <laughs> Another word for average is mediocre, right? <laughs> Isn't that synonymous? Yes. I don't know. Uh, I ask because English is not my first language. So, below average.
So, imagine you have, instead of five options, I have a hundred options. It, that could be copy-pasting a bunch of if statements. But they, all the if statements have something in common. You notice, I'm always testing the same variable. Right? So, when the computer executes from the top, what's inside the parentheses is a CPU cycle, at least, it might be longer. But this is a CPU cycle, then I do the if statement. This is a CPU cycle, then if statement. I'm doing this every time. When we did the example of um, the uh, retirement, there were two separate variables we were testing. So we kind of needed to combine the if statements. But in this case, there's a more efficient way. It might look longer typing it, but in the hardware, it's actually faster. If you're only, if you're only to te going to test one variable, we use something called a switch statement. And a switch statement basically tests one variable once. And I'm going to test the grade. like another function and the switch statement has its own set of blocks uh, curly brackets has a block so the last else what do we call it bless you yeah, we got call it the trailing else. What's another name? The default. The default, right? So the switch statement has a default. And Inside the if statement, sorry, the switch statement, we, um, we use column. It's like a label. So, the switch statement only tests the variable once. The if statement tests the variable every time. The condition for the switch statement, it has to be whole numbers. So it has to be an integer. It could be a character, like we have here. Character is just a number from 0 to 55. It could be an enumerator, which we're going to see that in a different um, class. And well, basically, it can be just whole numbers. To, to test if this grade was an A, I'm going to use something called a case. In this case, I'm going to test if it was an A. Just like that. And of course, I need my column. And then
So, what this switch is going to do, it's going to find the matching case. I don't have to put equal signs or anything. I'm not allowed to put equal signs. And until it, con until it finds it, execute the code below until you tell it to get out of the switch. So, for instance, if I do case B, so if I have a B, computer is going to look at the switch. But not fine. Case A, no. Case B, okay. Print F. What do you think is going to print out right now? It's going to say good failed. Because what if you got an A? It's going to print excellent good failed. Because inside a switch statement, I could have multiple cases. So I separated by the semi by the columns and then it will continue to execute down below until you tell it to get out in order to tell it to get out I'm going to use keyword break and we have an end of statement So the keyword break, it will find the matching curly brackets and it's going to go down to the closing curly bracket and continue down below. It is true for the switch statement, it also applies to loops, which we'll talk about those next week. So yeah, I might look that I have more. Typing. So there's no case for the F because the F was my default in here, my trailing L. So it might look like I have to type more. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen lines. Yeah, I type a little bit more. So what? It's more efficient. It's gonna execute faster. With computers now, if you have if you're writing for a desktop, it doesn't really matter that much, I guess. I mean the computer do can do three billion instructions per second. Okay, it took an extra 20. It's still 3 billion, right? <laughs> but you're not always going to write for a desktop. Let's say you're writing drivers. Then the driver, the device that is connected, doesn't have that much memory. The for instance, the my first computer was a 486, and I thought it was so fast. Hmm. I don't know if I told you. Then um, I wanted to make it a 586, so people buy the CPU and make it from a 33 megahertz to 133 megahertz. 
instead of Giga. And so I went and bought the CPU for 100 bucks, put it in, it didn't work. Oh, darn it. I took it back to the store. And I said, it doesn't work. They gave me another one. I went home, it didn't work. So it's not the chip, it's me who's burning them. And I just put it in. I didn't know there was this little thing in the motherboard painted like that and the CPU had the same thing. It's called a, so the CPU is like this. So that's called pin one. So were you bending the pins or? No, it just fits in that direction. I was just burning them. So I went to a different store. Cut the shrink wrap really, really carefully. Replace the uh, chip, put the right one in my computer. Put the other one back and said, I don't want it anymore. Jeez. And it was perfectly sealed back, so it didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why Circuit City went out of business. Because <laughs> that's where it was. Yes? Uh, I, I just don't, I just don't know. It's, uh is the switch same in like in a in a in an identifier or is it its own variable? Like or You're, what are variable? you testing here? Testing the variable. Okay. And then you're testing the value of that variable, right? What it could be. Uh, oh it's, well it's it's a it's a tester. Yeah, it's so like this if it's just that this is gonna be more efficient because I only test the variable once. In the if, I'm testing the same variable over and over and over again, taking more CPU resources. So, like I said earlier, you only want whole numbers. I had another variable yesterday. Call it double, and it was your point. So you got ninety three point five, right? Can I ask? Can I get the grade? Instead of using if points were greater than equal to 90 grades an A, instead of using those if, can I use a switch? Let's erase this. So You can try, you know, open your computer and see if it'll let you. But if I do switch, can I use double points? What kind of values does this one take? said you only takes whole number huh? so that's not gonna happen why do you think I can't I have to use a case and in the case I cannot say greater or equal than 90 I could do case 90, but then do I want to do case 
90.1, and so on until I get to 100. That would be crazy, right? So, switch doesn't allow you to do doesn't allow you to do uh, floating uh, decimal values. And you know why? If you look in your maybe in your previous homework, um, we did the uh, mileage calculator, didn't we? Did, if you didn't format the output, those are very long decimal values, right? Even if the numbers weren't that crazy, and that's called a precision error. The way the computer stores decimal values, it might be just a round down, a round up number. You put 0.8, and in reality, the computer is putting 0.79999. That's why it doesn't work. But, for instance, a double, uh, let's write it here. So I got two sets of 32 bits. This is the whole number, and here is the decimal part. So, this is 93.5. Reality is not stored like that, but this is just for the sake of the example. So, the double means I got two set of 32 bits. So, can I convert a double into a whole number? No guesses? Yeah. I mean, you got a 50-50 chance of... <laughs> Yeah. How? <clears throat> oh. So if this is a 64 bit. And if I make it an integer, that means I don't get the decimal portion, right? It's just a whole number. I can just drop this, right? So if I have 93.99, it'll just drop, drop it to 93. That's why sometimes. Some classes you'll see, uh, you get 89.99, you still get a B, it doesn't round up. It just drops the decimal, which is a bummer. So there's a way to convert a type to another. All these types we're looking, we call them primitive types, right? And the way to convert one to another is called casting. In order to cast a double to an integer, so I got my variable that's a double here. Right. I want to convert that to an integer. I have to do is cast the double to an integer. And all you do is put the data type in front in parentheses. So if I have an integer I can cast it to a double, it will be 93.0000. And if it's 93.5 and it's a double cast it to an integer, it'll just drop the decimal number. Easier. Right? Now I can use this switch. Because now I have a whole number. Well, what kind of case would you use? So my points become 93 instead of 93.5, right? Now I can do the cast. I guess I could do something like this. Case 90, case 91, case 92, case 93, case 94, case 
five and so on until I get to a 100 to get the A. That's not efficient either, right? So how can we make it more efficient then? So I, I don't want to type that many cases. I mean, then I have to do the same for the B, all the 80s and 70s, and that's too much. So what do you suggest I do? You need coffee? Mm -hmm. So how would you make one case? Can you use an F set with that or no? No, I'm just using the... Uh, then I go back to using the Fs. Inequality? Like, like uh, points greater than or equal to 90? 90. 90. You, can, you can't do ranges. You have to do whole numbers. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> this is a logical expression? Like, the ants? No. Or? How can I make my switch? Instead of using 90s and then use 10 cases there, I just want to use one. Oh, you just make it between, uh, did you just, did you just make it out of uh, 10 instead of 100? Five. <laughs> uh, you get, you get it for you're getting there. Uh, read a whole argument. What will you say? That, that you, you say if it's 9 and it's an A, if it's 8 yeah. then it's a B. And so on. Yeah, so all you have to do is divide that by 10, right? Huh. I do this. Instead of 93.5, it'll be divided by 10, it will be 9.35, right? I cast that to an integer, it's just 9. So I can. So you think that works? All right. Anyone here wants to be a teacher? Or is a teacher? I had teachers that so just come take the class so they can teach it to high school. So I ask. Well, let's say it's me, right? And I use this program to give you your grades. You know I don't give extra credit because you're doing bad. Don't ask me waste your time. But I might give you extra credit along the way to everybody. And you are just really good at, at this and uh, you did all the extra credit and then you got 105 points. Because you got the extra 5 points extra credit. What grade would you get based on that yeah. pro? You get an F. Right? So you get penalized for being such a dedicated student. <laughs> so how will you fix it? Mm -hmm. hmm? So if you get a hundred and five, what will the switch become? Ten, right?
Mm-hmm. Let's put them out. Two cases. That's it. Because the computer is going to see the case and it's going to execute down until it finds a break or it finds the end of the switch. That's why the default, we don't really need to write a break. I mean, you could write a break here. You'll see it sometimes. But since it's the last statement, the switch ends anyways. So what difference does it make? But now, I made the program efficient. Questions? You'll see, um, you learn something called a truth table once you get into higher classes. And when you use truth tables, the switch works really, really good. All right. Well, that's all it is for. Uh, conditional statements and switch statements. I'll give you a lab assignment. And unless you have any questions. <laughs>